Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And um, today we are going to make something and I haven't even made a prototype. So hopefully this is gonna go well. Um, I have made similar items before. It's gonna be a flippy flappy folio um, that opens up a few different ways and has lots of pockets and tuck spots. So um, I am using the uh, Gratitude I'm not quite sure what she called it. Um, papers um, hmm, from Pink Monarch Friends. Okay, the bonus pocket fall project um, here in October. And there's all kinds of pretty items. And, you know, obviously when you print the sheets out, they come like this. And I don't have all those cool video uh, editing techniques which show you they show you the, the printables, the digital paper, and then poof, they've been cut out. So I have cut out my items. Um, I did all of that prep work so you don't have to watch me cut on camera. Um, so we've got lots to decorate with and to make this one super special. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside though because first we have to construct the folio. So this part is something, like I said, I've made ones like this before, or similar. They're, they always turn out a little differently because I do them different each time. I'm not using, a, th this particular one is not like part of the kit um, that you just follow the instructions with the kit. So, some things you're gonna need. Uh, some cardstock. I'm using craft because I think it will coordinate well with the colors of this kit, and I like craft cardstock. I use it a lot. If you have been with me on this journey for a while, you know that. Um, I did start with 12 by 12 pieces of paper because my largest two pieces um, is one 12 by 12 cut in half and I'm going to give you the measurements and everything here in just a minute so you do need some type of cardstock use whatever you have whatever color you like whatever works for you and by the way you can also embellish this with any papers you have or anything that, that you want to use so this isn't something you have to go out and purchase a, a specific kit or, or kind of paper okay so some kind of cardstock some type of uh pattern pretty papers that you want to decorate with. Obviously, if you have a way to cut the paper, like um, with a paper trimmer, that would be great. Um, some scissors, you need a ruler, you need some kind of bone folder and scoring tool. I am going to use my scoreboard, um, but you can also just use a metal ruler um, and a scoring tool. So lo lots of flexibility there. Um, some type of adhesive, right? And anything else you want to decorate with. I think that's it. Um, we'll see. It, it, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to add ribbons and lace and all that kind of stuff or if I'm going to do that on the video or not, but we'll see how we do. So the first thing you need to do is to get your card stock ready. So the first piece of 12 by 12, you just wanna cut it in half. So now you have two pieces that are six by 12, okay? And I'm gonna plug my school board. So the first piece you're gonna lay, and it's on the um, 12, inch, 12 inch side, right? And we are gonna score it at four and a half inches, five inches, nine and a half, and at 10. So let's start with four and a half. And again, this is where the scoreboard does make it a little bit quicker than if you're using a ruler, but you can do that. Don't feel like you have to jump out. This is the nine and a half and, and buy everything or buy everything at once if you're adding to your supplies and tool collection. Okay, so four and a half, five, nine and a half, and 10. All right, I'm gonna set that one aside. The next 12 by six sheet, you're gonna wanna score it at three and a half, uh, let's see, seven and a half, seven and a half seven and three quarters, a little tiny, tiny fold there, um, and at 11 inches, okay? 
All right, so there was one, two, three, four, four scores there. So again, if you want to see it, we scored it at three and a half, seven and a half, seven and three quarters, and 11. All right, now you need a piece of card stock that is five inches by 11. All right, so we have the right one in place. And again, put your long side down, and we're going to score it at three and a half, three and three quarters, and seven and a half. Three and a half, three and three quarters. Let's see if I got that one right. Okay, and then seven and a half. Now all of this is gonna be building our, how it's gonna attach together um, and our flippy flaps. So it is important to get these as straight as you can. Okay, now you need a piece that is four by 10 or 10 by four. Um, and this one, we're just gonna fold in half. I am gonna score it at that five inch since it's, whoops, my hand went a little wonky because all we're gonna do is fold this one in half. So I scored it at the five inch mark. All right, and now we need a piece that is four by eight. This one gets scored at two inches and six inches. So two and six. Okay, hopefully I can remember what I planned because all I did was this part. I did not plan the rest of it. <laughs> so let's hope it works. Let me show you real quick. So I said I didn't make a prototype and I, I sort of did and I sort of didn't. I just used some cardstock I had laying around. So you're gonna see when we start doing the folds, that first 12 by 12 piece, this is the size that we're gonna be making. Okay, the bar flippy flap, this one's gonna open up. I probably don't have these folded right. I haven't quite decided. Um, and it will lay flat. So this piece has a little pocket here. It's gonna open up. And then we have this piece here. And then using decorative papers, which I'm gonna tell you about a little bit later, we're gonna have, um, where, let's see, I'm trying to remember what I did. I think it's gonna be like a pocket here. And this is gonna fall down, you're gonna have a pocket. So we'll give you the measurements and figure all of this out and decorating it in a little bit. But um, I think it's gonna be cute. It's hard to tell from this, but um, we'll get started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, that's as far as I got with my planning. So here we go. Now, it is important as you are um, folding your paper that we just scored, that you are careful and um, you know, if, if it doesn't appear things are lining up straightly, adjust it a little bit. Don't just stay true to your score line um, if it's gonna make everything be, be off and wonky. So um, basically you just wanna fold in each place that we scored. And this is gonna start making your um, spines for you, okay? So that's the first one. And then this is the larger part of the cover. And all I'm doing is following my score lines. But again, I'm making sure everything looks squared up before I reinforce the crease. Okay, so this is our cover. Whoa. All right, and it's gonna get lots of layers of paper um, and get reinforced as we go. In fact, I usually like this flap here, so we'll pay attention to how we decorate. All right? All right, so that's our cover. I'm gonna set that one aside. And then we're gonna take the next piece of six by 12 paper. And again, make sure everything looks like it's squaring up. And then this one has a little tiny quarter inch spine, but this is where it's going to attach to that 
half inch spine on the cover. And all of this is gonna make sense soon. Now, if you've made one of these with me before, you'll see the construction is basically the same, but um, the measurements can always change, right? Because to make it whatever size you want it to be. And um, I think it's important you know, as you start making your own designs, if you can get kind of the basic idea of how to construct these, then you can use all kinds of stuff. You can, um, goodness, make, um, use junk mail, use flyers you get, use whatever paper and scraps you have, right? So honestly, if you don't have 12 by 12 paper, your measurements won't work out for this project, but you could make your own using just eight and a half by 11. You could start with a six by 11 piece of paper instead of a six by 12, right? Like you just wouldn't have this one flap here, okay? So there's, there's lots of things you can do to use what you have on hand, make it any size. All right, we're setting that one aside. All right, this is another one of the inside flippy flaps. Again, I'm just following my score lines and making sure I'm being very careful to make sure everything is straight. And this paper, it's e it's actually quite easy to work with. It's it 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 is sturdy. It's not the thickest thickest of cardstock. But um, it's sturdy enough. It doesn't crush easily, but it will fold nice and crisp. So I do like it. Um, not sure what that piece is for. It might just be an extra. <laughs> or we'll use it to reinforce something. All right, this one. Again, not quite don't really remember what everything is for but we will figure it out as we go and that's the thing too is there there's no mistakes um you really can use what you have on hand okay this is the one we just fold in half and i need to make sure i get it good because my score line went wonky remember but i'm just making sure everything lines up nice and pretty all right so now let's Let's put this baby together. So you wanna get the one that you know is your cover. Like I said, even how it opens really is up to you. You, you could flip yours around. Um, I, I tend to like ones that open this way and then it'll start unfolding. So we're gonna turn mine where I have the smaller flap here. The first thing we're going to um, add to is gonna be glued in here and you know what I'm going to ink these for you just realized you may be able to see this better on camera if I add a little bit of ink yeah so that they'll stand out for you and you can see where we're working hopefully that will help all right there we go okay um <coughs> my score pal tape on this to make sure these um, stick really well. Um, this is the quarter inch width and where we are sticking is a quarter of an inch. So let me show you how this is going to go. This is going to stick right to here and I do want to bring it almost to this side of the score, score line because I have a half an inch when you put it in the middle. I can't remember why, but I learned at one time putting it to the edge helps. So we're gonna do that. And the score tape is gonna go on the back side, right in that quarter inch section. Again, just to make it a little bit easier to see on camera. There's no other reason for that. That inking, because you're not gonna see it on the back. All right, let's find the end of my score tape. Now this stuff, as you know, it adheres really well, but once you stick it down, you don't really have any wiggle room. So depending on how confident you are, you have a couple of choices. You can go for it. <laughs> you can also add a little bit of wet white glue so that it will slide just a little bit until it dries. Um, 
to, to, to give you maybe a, a few seconds, right, to make an adjustment if you need to. So we're going to do that because sure as I don't, I'll get it in here crooked. And then my whole project will be a little wonky. Okay. So you have to work pretty quickly with art glitter glue too. So I'm just, I hope you can see this. I'm just lining it up as straight as I can and pushing it down. Okay. And we're going to make sure that really adheres well. All right. I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. Well, I think I got it pretty straight. It's not perfect, but I think it's going to be good. All right. So now what do we have? That is going to turn into um, probably a side pocket. I haven't decided yet. This one's going to open up. We're going to have pockets and journaling spots and different things depending on our papers that we choose to use. All right. So now the first thing is when you open it up right here, and then you flip and you have here, and you go back here, right? Okay, now we are going to attach the piece that goes on this side. So again, to hopefully make it easier for you to see. There we go, I added some ink. All right, so now we're gonna be working on this side. And that is this piece. So the other piece, and this one, I believe, this was the um, five by 11 piece, okay? So it's five inches by 11, and we did our scoring. And this one, we're gonna kind of eyeball it, but just center in here. It's not the same height. It's not the six six inch height. It's five inches, so we have about a half an inch on either side. You could put it all the way to the bottom. You could do put it wherever you want. And this one's also going to just kind of flap open. Now, one option we have is, do we want it to flap open here? And I think I do. I'm gonna have it extend past the um, cover, but it'll fold all up and stay inside. Okay, so again, we have to add our adhesive to that quarter inch wide spine or hinge, whatever we wanna call it. And if you don't have any tape, the the, the the glue will hold. I mean, I wouldn't use like a glue stick, but um, I always try to remember to show you guys, this is the, the glue that I use, our glitter glue. You know, you just have to make sure you really let it stick and, um, and dry, you know, before you mess with it too much. And it does dry quickly, um, but it, it will hold this. Um, while I'm on camera especially, I like knowing I've also used the score tape. Um, I just don't want things to wiggle too much on me. All right. And I decided I wanted it to open this way. So I've got it turned the correct way. And again, I'm just gonna eyeball it. If it matters to you a lot, go ahead and measure and mark it and it'll be easier um, for you. All right. So I'm going to really burnish it down good. The glue kind of oozes out. Just wipe it up <laughs> and give it time to dry. Okay. All right. It's coming together. All right. We got our flippy flaps. And see how every, ooh, I said everything would live in here. It's not living the way I wanted it to. Let me give it a second. Okay, it was just that I had my, my uh, spine crooked. <laughs> We're okay, everything's good. All right, and it fits in there nicely. Okay, and again, as we add more and more layers, it's gonna start to feel more substantial. And um, I remember what this piece is now. And not as nerve-wracking. Okay, this piece, 
and I have to decide how I want to use it. Um, uh, let me make sure. You guys got to stay. Okay, yeah, that's as far as I got with this one was those two. But then I started thinking, ooh, we could do all kinds of stuff. So, um, I think what I did... This looks right. Let me make sure it all fits. It's a little tight. I think what I did was I wanted this cover to feel reinforced, but also make a flip in a pocket. So by adding another layer of this cardstock to the outside cover, um, and depending on how we adhere it, you get a little more thickness, right? And then we get a little another feature. So I think what I'm gonna do is this one is going to get glued to the top, um, but just on three sides. So we have a top, a pocket here, and we can put a tag that sticks out. And then because it isn't quite the the full six inches. I'll probably add a pocket or a layer of paper, if you can see down here, and then that'll also get reinforced with some, some structure. All right, so, and I'm also gonna come a little bit to the edge. Um, I'm not sure what I'm putting on the front yet. Um, well, I'll go ahead and just center it between the spine and the edge of the paper. So. And then this one's going to flip up in probably a journaling spot. I'll probably put some coffee dyed paper or something there. All right. So make it a little bit easier to see. And I have not obviously inked everything yet. So that's something you know me. I'll be going back and doing um, later where I need to or want to. Okay. So we're going to add glue here, here, and here because I want to leave the top open. If we wanted a side loading pocket, we could do there, but that'll probably interfere with how this folds up, so we're not gonna risk it. Whoops, picked up the wrong glue bottle. All right, craft card stock does tend to, the glue just kind of, it, it's thirsty, right? It's a little dry, I think, is a term. And so I do make sure, even though I'm still trying to do a pretty thin bead of glue, I make sure I, I have enough. Um, I just, for some reason, it tends to need a little more than a more slick cardstock. I'm also gonna bring my glue up and make this pocket a little more shallow so that some of those smaller tags or the ones that aren't quite as tall can fit in here and not completely disappear. All right, a little bit extra on each side just to make sure. Okay, and like I said, I am bringing it up to the top. So it's kind of, you know, except for what you see sticking out, it's sort of a hidden pocket. All right, and already that's starting to feel a little more sturdy. I always kind of fold everything back up and make sure I didn't make a mistake. Um, about where things are going to live and fit. All right. Um, and I think this piece, I didn't cut it to the right size, was kind of to reinforce this, this back cover as well. Um, this piece. But I don't think we need it right now because I'm going to be adding some decorative papers. Now I have to decide if I want to use this one as a gatefold. Or it can be a gatefold, which is kind of fun. Um, and, and maybe I'll save it and we'll, we'll see if it fits somewhere. Ooh, it would fit there. Um, but let's see what I do with my pattern papers first. So right now you have um, all the pieces that I gave you the measurements for and that we scored in the folio. Okay. So now we kind of get to start having the fun part. So let's first, though, definitely adhere or decide what we're doing with this back section once it's open. And I 
did, like I said, kind of think through these papers. So this one is 10 by four, okay? So I also have a piece, ah, look, there's that gatefold. That's probably what it was is I was trying to figure out the prototype. Ah. But this isn't gonna work that way. This is gonna turn into two pockets instead. This one is eight by four. All right, so 10 by four, eight by four. It can be any papers or patterns that you like. And what I want this to do when you open up is this is flap is gonna open. You're gonna have a pocket here with some things. This is a pocket and it's gonna close like this. So this is what you're gonna have. Or if you wanted, it could even go like this. Okay, and fold down first and then up. Totally however the user wants to do it. So I'm going to add adhesive to the back of this piece um, to decide which side I want. Uh, to see on the front. I think I want this side. So we're going to glue this side. Now again, you could make an extra pocket if you wanted to. I'm just going to lay glue down on the whole back and stick it down good. But let your imagination run wild. If you want an extra pocket back there, go for it. Okay. And again, I'm going to bring this one centered into the top. You don't, I mean, except for aesthetics and what it looks like, you don't have to be exactly centered or perfect, but what you don't want to do is in any way go over into where your um, spine is or then things won't fold up right, okay? Now, if you recall, this is going to be turned into a pocket. So the only place probably should have done a little inking, that this piece is going to be adhered is um, by the three sides on this pocket. So again, use good adhesive. It shouldn't be a problem, but, um, you know, don't, don't, don't skimp on your glue. Uh, even though you have to have it um, only on three sides. All right, so this is going to be, oops, we got to make sure this is open. And this is going to turn into a pocket here. I think I want to put a notch. So I'm going to grab one of my circle punches. You can use any size really you want. This is a one and a half. And I'm gonna do a notch in this pocket and in this pocket. And since I want them to match, I'm not gonna crease this. I'm just gonna carefully hold it together, do one punch so they line up perfectly. And I don't need a super deep, I'm just eyeballing the center. Didn't need a super deep um, notch. Okay, but now they match cute, right? All right, back up. Now, again, this is, this, 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 by the way, was printed on 65 pound, um, cardstock paper. So it's very similar to the craft. All right. So this is where it's gonna adhere. We just need glue on this side, the bottom and this side. And then we're gonna have to be really careful as we stick it down. And again, I'm being, um, I'm not coming in or up too much, but I am making sure it's a pretty thick bead, even if it oozes some. I'd rather know this was stuck down well. And I'm keeping it folded up this way so that I make sure I line up the bottom really well. There's a little bit off there, but I can live with that. I can probably add a strip of paper or a decoration or embellishment there if I want to. All right, so now this is now a pocket, right? Um, it's a pocket. And when I glue these two sides, this is gonna be a pocket. 
Okay. I just realized I didn't tell you, even though I gave you the measurement of this piece of paper, I didn't tell you where to score it. And that is why I have this piece, my friend, because it is exactly the same. So, as a reminder, this piece was eight by four, and you're gonna score it at two and six. So we made two inch pockets, okay? All right, get this out of the way. Let's see where we're at. Fun, it's already starting to look cute, don't you think? All right, I have to decide what all we're gonna do to decorate this. So now, um, we want to start adding some of our patterned papers, um, add our pockets and our embellishments, okay? But it's already starting to feel nice and thick and sturdy, okay? So I did, like I said, I cut a lot of things out, but I didn't really think through everything that needed to be um, layered and covered in paper. I have some scraps that I'm probably gonna use, and I'm probably gonna use part of this because I like it. Um, I'm not quite sure what this project um, this is a pocket of some kind and, and what we were doing with it in the kit, but I just printed it to use as paper. So I'm sure Anna or Elena at Pink Monarch Prints probably has a video on how to make what, what they had in mind. And I'm just turning it into something something different, something extra. So um, we're going to, I think, just use my metal ruler and do some instead of going over to the paper trimmer, I kind of like some of the rough edges. So we're gonna just tear first along these two sides. And then that's a strip that I could use. So I'm gonna save that of the polka dots. Let's see. So, you know, it'll just leave us a little border. I'm not sure if I want a little border or I could do the polka dots on this side and then use this for something else later. So I think I may do that. Um, Cause I don't think I have a piece really completely large enough and I would like to get fairly close to the edge just to reinforce and give this a little more sturdiness. So again, it was six by four and a half because of where I folded. So I'm going to tear it approximately, let's see. We're gonna do like five and three quarters. Okay, and I'm using the grid on my mat to help me with this. Um, this would be five and three quarters. So I'm having trouble seeing, I'm gonna lift it up here. The big thing is just make sure, you know, the paper's straight on the grid as much as possible. Five and three quarters is right here. You hear my dogs barking? They're at it again. <laughs> All right, so five and three quarters is our height. And then, what did I say this was? Four and a half. So we're gonna go with four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. All right, and I didn't leave much of this in any kind of usable fashion, but, but we'll use it. We'll use it in some way. Okay, see, oh wait, that's kind of cute. It has that line there. That doesn't really bother me. Maybe we'll use that, because I have the polka dots and, and some other papers printed. So maybe we'll use it and come up I don't know. Do I care that that's upside down? I think I could probably cover it. You know what? I'm going to stay with polka dots. I'm not going to overthink this um, because I am on camera and at the end of the day, it'll be okay. 
I, if I had known I was gonna use this piece of paper just for layering, I would not have printed it on both sides. I would have printed um, it on two separate pieces of cardstock and with just it would just be plain white on the back that you don't see. But I decided to use it for this since it's already printed. Okay, so we're gonna end up layering and decorating this up. So this one, I'm not gonna try to do anything fancy and turn into a pocket. We're just gonna stick it to our cover so that we can just kind of start seeing how this is gonna come together. Sometimes with these different paper packs and kits you can get, you know, on Etsy and from different artists, I follow, you know, their tutorials and you know, maybe make it a little my own decorating because it's just fun. You learn like different, um, different techniques and like how to do a waterfall pocket and how to do different things. Um, but sometimes I just take the papers and just start making my own stuff because um, I just, that's what I like to do. So I do both. Um, but usually when I do decide to follow somebody else's tutorial for their kit, I do learn a new, a new technique, right? And um, that's always really helpful. All right, just a little bit of inking. I'll come back later and probably do more, but just so we can kind of see how it's coming together. All right, I do like this flap usually on the front. So this is where we, it's gonna fit nicely, I think. Have about the same edge. So this will fit nicely here. Um, or I could use a strip of this and I may do that because then the words all of the words will be sideways it won't be like I have some of the words turned right and then some upside down so I think I'm gonna tear a piece that's gonna fit in here so again same height so I want it to be five and three quarters so let me just lay this on my mat and we'll tear it really quick. I love to tear paper, if you didn't know that. <laughs> okay, and then this one is two inches, right? I had scored it to leave two inches, so I want one and three quarters. Hmm. I'm gonna need to do it this way because I want the one and three quarters not with this edge, with the branding strip. Okay. We're gonna just put it right there. I like that. All right. So since I am gluing these down, I just do wanna do a quick ink because that's really hard to go back later and do. You can, but it doesn't quite get the same effect if you've glued it down and then you come back with something to add some ink. So I am doing it ahead of time. All right. So I hope you are enjoying my projects and, and things I come up with to make. If so, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and um, leave me a comment. Let me know you're here. If you're already been with me for a while, thank you, thank you, thank you for returning and coming back and watching more videos. Um, I have other social media accounts too, so if you haven't hooked up with me on Instagram or Pinterest or Patreon, please do. Patreon has a new thing where you can be a free member. I'm going to try to start posting a few more things there, um, but I do have some different paid membership levels as well. If that's something that interests you, I also have a website. So come join me. The more the merrier. We have a lot of fun. All right. Okay. Soon all of this is going to start to feel when we have some kind of designs and things very natural about where things fall. Okay, and certainly we are going to add more to the cover, but we're going to leave it there for now. And then let me think about this. Now, I don't think that every piece of this cardstock has to be completely covered. I have all of these goodies that we're gonna use and some of them, you know, depending on how they go, might, might actually um, fit 
some of the, the spaces and we may just tear them and, and glue them down and then add pockets. Or I may just decide to, I think there's a size of this that's a little bit bigger. Let's see if it would fit. You know, we may just decide on some of these to just, you know, put a pocket and leave some of the craft card stock there because there'll also be tags and things decorating it. So that's just something as we go, I'm gonna have to be thinking about and deciding. Obviously, I do like the layered look and I like showing off these pretty papers from this month's kit. So like this one would fit in here perfectly if I just rip off a little bit of the edge. And you see how I'm not measuring, I'm just holding it to my project. And what happens when you do that is it's not always exactly perfect, but um, I think it gives it, one, it's quick, <laughs> but it also gives it a little bit of that, you know, one of a kind, unique um, design element. I mean, it's handmade. Um, I also love, though, like there are some artists out there that, you know, are so precise with their measurements and get everything lined up and it's so pretty. Um, to see their work and it's so professional looking. So again, I, depending on the project, I go different ways, but I guess I wanna empower you that things don't always have to be absolutely perfect. And if measuring overwhelms you a little bit or gets a little tedious for you, I just wanna empower you to, you know, you, use your project to help you line up your paper and then tear and you don't have to measure. So again, up to you. That's pretty. And if I thought about it, I might have used this one because it kind of has some natural lines in the pattern up here because I was thinking that would be such a good journaling spot. And I was thinking this might be a nice collage, but we'll see. Um, what else I have? I may have another piece of that. Um, they're so pretty. Now these are from, um, not just from that bonus kit, these papers. Um, are ones where I made another journal. There's a piece of the stripe. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line it up and chop it off. I'm gonna try to get it about the same as I did the first one. Um, I made another journal using just the other papers, but they all coordinate and um, look really nice together. So since I already had them printed and I have scraps left, I wanna use them. Okay, and now I have these strips that I might find a place for too. All right, I'm gonna see where we're at with time on this video. We may decide we have to have a um, part one and a part two. Um, we'll see, and since I didn't have one put together to show you what we were making, once I'm all finished, I may do a short showing it, like a short video, and then that way you know what you're making perhaps before you watch this tutorial. I know some people like to know what they're gonna be making before they commit to getting all their supplies out and crafting along. <laughs> so, I'm gonna fold that back just a little and add a little ink there. And like I said, I most likely will go through later and add extra inks. Let me see how long we've been going. Eh, we've been going about 43 minutes, so we may stop here soon. And then I may go ahead and layer some papers on, following the same idea. And then we could decorate and embellish together because I think this is gonna take a little while to get all of these kind of covered the way I want to. I just said we weren't necessarily gonna do that, but I do like the look. Um, I like how it's coming together. So why don't we do that? I'm gonna take a break from uh, having the camera on. I'm gonna layer some more papers on here, just doing the same thing, just tearing them, inking them, uh, tearing them to fit, inking them, layering, and then we'll come back through with all of our pockets and tags and other tuck spots. So I can show you how to do that piece. All right, and I'm probably gonna cover the back too. All right, so I'll be back. This is part one. There'll definitely be a part two. Have a great day. Thanks everybody.